On today's installment of the Hyper Blue Project, it is time to paint. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another installment of the Hyper Blue Project. We're back out in the garage in the terrible echo, but whatever, we're just gonna roll with it. And today it's all about painting our system in the Hyper Blue and also to the matte black color schemes that we are gonna be using. Now, we'll get into more about the paints and the bits and pieces, but we've already done a ton of preparation, which was last episode, kind of boring, but a lot of preparation has gone in, meaning the end result should be a pretty good result. The more prep work you put in, generally speaking, the way better results you're gonna get out of your spray cans. Now again, we are using spray cans in the worst situation, but whatever, we're gonna go ahead and roll with it. So let's get into some painting. But before we do that, we need to finish some last minute paint preparation. We'll mask off the fans so that we can get them done a little bit later in the video. Now when masking these types of fans, it's crucial that we don't miss a single spot and we don't over mask as that can actually ruin the final paint job. If there's too much masking, we'll see some white through there. If there's not enough masking, we'll see blue in places where blue shouldn't be. Then we'll also do need to do some final filling and sanding on the front panel just to make sure everything is glass smooth. I left this guy to last so I could get this done exactly on the morning so we could throw some paint straight over it and everything would look ready to go. Now speaking of ready to go, before I went ahead and painted everything, I also do hit it with some wax and grease remover to make sure there was no wax and grease on these guys that would ruin the paint job. Now on the topic of painting, today we're using three different types of primers. We're using plastic, we're using etch and also two filler. With our plastic adhesion primer used for plastic parts such as the front panel and fans, the etch primer used for things like the metal case and filler area and also to, well, the filler for any areas where we did some sanding or work on this guy that was not stock. Then for the base coat itself, we're using Color Spec Matched Base Coat. Now this guy is color matched to the Subaru M3Y Hyper Blue paint color, which comes out really, really nice. And for our accent color, we just have some generic matte black acrylic paint that would go really well as a sort of sweet black offset. Now to keep everything all covered up, I also do grab myself multiple cans of clear acrylic coating here to keep things, well, all nice and shiny, but also to protect it as the last thing you want is to accidentally bump your computer and leave a horrible big scratch in this guy. Speaking of scratching, we do need to grab ourselves some sandpaper and for this project, I grabbed everything from 1500 grit all the way up to 3000 grit with everything else in between that I could grab at the local hardware store. It was important to get a lot of different options for that super nice quality finish. Again, as I do keep coming back to it, the better your preparation, the better quality the end result will be. Now in terms of protecting ourselves, this is something a lot of people do forget, but we do all know that paint fumes and lungs, generally speaking, don't mix, so it's a good idea to grab yourself a proper set of masks here. However, when it comes to paint fumes, you do need something that is definitely rated for paint fumes, like what we're going to be using today, or a proper respirator or air system is definitely mandatory when spraying in a small confined area. Now, that being said, our small confined area is going to be using a number of these types of box fans and also two, I have a large roller door that I can open up to get a bunch of airflow in here. One final piece of the puzzle is this guy. This is something I absolutely love and I've actually got two of these which were actually old work lights that died so I drilled some holes in them and it allows me to hang up what I'm painting. Now, the benefit of doing this is it allows me to spin items around on that so I can get nice even painting but also two, it keeps it up off the ground and up off any flat surface so dust can't land on the main area you want to paint. A simple coat hanger hangs everything on this guy and it is all ready to go. You'll be seeing me use these two guys over and over and over throughout this series. Really, really awesome piece of kit. Now when painting in a cold environment like what I'm doing as it is winter here and unfortunately I can't just wait around till summer rolls around, I'm actually going to be using a hairdryer to warm up the cans that we are using here today. The idea here is we want them to be warm but not actually hot because paint cans didn't spray cans in general generally work a lot better when they are of that warm temperature, kind of around that body temperature. We don't want to be touching the cans and having them burn our hands, but what we do want is them not to be stone cold. Warming cans can definitely help with the spreading of paint and that's what I'm going to be doing here. And we'll know when the can is ready to paint once they're warm and dimples start to appear on the bottom of this guy, which means we're ready for the fun part and to start painting. 
Now speaking of that fun part, let's get into some actual painting. I started off with the main chassis of the case to get some etch primer going on there to see where we were at with the actual case because the last thing I wanted to do was have all the accessories painted but not actually have the case itself ready to go. So I did a number of super light coats to go ahead and actually get the whole case painted up and it is actually looking not too bad. Now you'll actually see me moving around quite a lot and taking a closer look here, we got every surface covered up that I did manage to see and get the light on. Whilst this guy was drying, I also did grab the side panel and my light and we went ahead and did the side panel here with our primer and also too, as you guessed it, the same with the front panel. Now the reason why I've done these three things all in a row is because I want the paint to turn out exactly the same on both the front panel, the case itself and also to the side panel. Paint can vary from time to time. If you do paint in different environments, you can get a slightly different finish. And the last thing I want is to have the side panel, the front panel and also to the case with different finishes on it. So I'm doing them all in one go. So primers and base coat and clear coat will all be done on the same day, same time as each other and almost identical timings. Now on the topic of primers, I hit the SSDs whilst I was waiting around for the actual case itself to dry. And then we could go ahead and hit it with some base coat a little bit later on. Now the side panel was the first thing to actually be hit with some color here with the color spec cans actually using high flow nozzles. So the actual result you get out of these cans is very similar to what you would find in a paint gun. Note I said similar, not exactly the same. Now I'm actually gonna be using a bunch of light coats and gradually building up as the last thing you want is a run in your base coat. Sadly, however, the camera doesn't do it justice and it kind of looks like I just did one heavy coat and kept doing more and more heavy coats, but do trust me on this one, the coats were very, very light. It just seems to be the fact that we're painting at like 11 p.m., the camera saw the slightest bit of blue and then just decided the whole panel was blue. Now at this point, the sun was completely gone as I did mention, but I did push on into the night as once I started, I wanted to get it all done in one go. Ideally, I would have waited for the next day or the next sunny afternoon, but sadly, that was not an option for me but do keep in mind when painting at home to try and find a nice sunny or nice warm afternoon to get everything done. Now when painting your PC case we'll also do need to keep in mind that not the actual whole thing is flat. There may be flat surfaces but there's a lot of nooks and crannies and little bits and pieces here and there that could be easily missed. So you'll actually see me moving around quite a lot to actually get the whole case actually painted up and after a number of coats this thing is looking absolutely awesome or well I guess as good as it can look at night with a single LED work light at like 11 p.m. But once we come back tomorrow, everything will look great. So the next day has rolled right around and we are jumping back into it again with the Ram sticks. These things were the first things on the mark to go ahead and get painted today. I hit them up with that super sweet blue and you may notice I'm actually holding my small little LED light so I can actually get some extra light on this guy. Sure, we did have the roller door open and sure, I did have some other LED studio lights around but it was nice just to have a little bit of extra light on my hand so I could easily see what was going on. I did a number of coats and they turned out not too too bad at all. Now whilst waiting for these guys to dry, I also to attack the fans with some blue. I did the first sort of trial run of a fan in case something did go wrong. I didn't want to paint all of them and discover it went really wrong. Now you, again, you'll see me moving to just about every single angle to try and cover this fan. Because I had to mask this guy off and not pull this guy apart, unfortunately that did make it very, very hard to actually get a good consistent paint job. So that's why I'm moving around quite a lot. Now also too, while painting, it's a great idea to keep the cans nice and warm. Ideally, you may want to put the actual cans in some warm water, but for me, every few minutes, I just grab my hairdryer, warm the cans back up, and we were all good to go again. Again, we don't want to heat up the cans, we just want to keep them warm. While the fan dried, I also do hit the SSDs with some super sweet matte black to round out some of the paint that we're actually doing here. Okay, it's been such a long day, but it is a bit of an update uh, as to what's going on here. So as you can see, we've been painting things like the RAM, the fan has also to come. I'm still trying to um, unwrap it from all the masking, but the fans have come up so, so nice. Now there's a little bit of over masking on this corner right here and this corner right here, but there's nothing a little bit of touch up paint can't fix. The fan has turned out exactly what I want on both front and back. Again, I still need to take all the masking tape off for it to 
actually look good. Uh, the RAM covers themselves are also too looking flippin' sick. So we can take out, say, this one right here and we can see uh, the top of it looks really, really sweet. The side of it looks really, really sweet. They're a tad tacky because they're still drying, but uh, another 15, 20 minutes, they'll be perfectly fine. I have assembled them just so I can get a look at what they look like, and I can definitely say, man, do they look absolutely awesome. Um, whilst I was waiting for that to dry, I was doing some soldering, actually getting some LED strips, and if we come over to here, actually, no, we'll come back over here. We've got, like, the uh, female side of the super multi-interface uh, connector, this guy, uh, we've got that masked off and I've just gone ahead and thrown a single coat of matte black on it. Once I do get it all um, situated in the case, I'm going to throw another coat on it for a bit of a deeper black. We've got the back ends of the SSDs all painted up and then if we come over to... Let's go over here first. Uh, we can kind of get an idea of some of our SSDs, although, well they're black so they're not going to show up um, they're still drying I initially did a paint on the floor as we saw in the video but dust blew on them and I didn't like it so I repainted them so uh, first thing here is one of the side panels actually the only side panel because the other one's a piece of acrylic but fun fact we're getting a piece of glass for that so do stay tuned that's really cool first panel turned out flawlessly well, there's no flaws for me to show you, so I can't really show you that much. Anyway, front panel, I've gone ahead and rewired, so put the electronics back inside of it so we can see that's kind of a dangling out the front. I just did that because I was waiting for paint to dry, and if you've ever watched paint dry, you know how long it takes. So I was a bit bored, I put that all back together. The front assembly, the front panel, you can't even tell that I had angle grinded out a logo. Really, really sweet. The first fan is in there that has already been painted, so we can kind of get an idea. Even though it's terrible lighting, we'll get a better shot later on, but um, the first fan in, so I've got the second one sitting on the table, which will go here, third one here, and then fourth over here, and fifth and sixth will go on top of the cooler. Um, other thing going on inside of the case, uh, let's go ahead and bump that ISO so we can see what's going on in here. Um, other things, oh yeah, we've uh, painted these guys matte black. They were black out of the box, but I was like, nah, they need to be matte black, so I did them. Really want to do the screws because they do shine out, but uh, whatever. Feet, again, um, they've also too been painted matte black. Again, even though out of the box they were black, I wanted them matte black. I've also too, again, waiting for paint to dry as you do. I've gone ahead and thrown in the little work LEDs that we can kind of see down there. So they're thrown in there. Obviously the wires are just chilling out here waiting for me to solder up and connect all together. LED strips that I did mention before, I've made up some of them. We can kind of see some uh, black burns on the, um, on the heat shrink. That's because I had to use matches, I didn't have a lighter handy, and um, the other one is already up there. So, lighting is starting to go in, obviously if we jump around to this side, we get an idea that nothing's actually wired up, so we'll have to wait for another day to actually wire things up. Just trying to get stuff together and um, get things built while I wait for paint to dry, because, well, kind of just watching over there, waiting for those things to dry, isn't really the most fun thing to do. So. Those things are going ahead and drying over here. Again, really, really cool stuff going on here. I'm super impressed in how well the RAM dims have come out and also do how well the fans did come out. Now, again, there's a little bit of overmasking in some sections, but again, nothing that a little bit of touch-up paint can't fix. I'm super stoked. I was really worried that these fans wouldn't come out and then I would destroy six fans. Turns out they've been absolutely flawlessly. So, a little bit more painting and then we will be done. Now, once I verified that the finish on the fans were okay, the rest could come out and get covered and painted and primed and all those good things. The plastic primer was the first thing to hit these guys and then we hit them at all angles for maximum coverage with our hyper blue paint. Finally, the SSD is dried, which allowed me to attach other things to that rack. And we also do hit the smaller bits of trim with the standard matte black that we're gonna be using to really give a nice offset. Now do note, I didn't actually prime these little plastic trim the reason why I didn't prime them was I found the matte black was really nice without a primer to it. It just seemed kind of interesting kind of finish that really matched this rest of the build. It doesn't come through a camera at all, but definitely in person it looks really nice. So just something you may want to note. Then the final fans were gone ahead and painted and all the painting was just about done. Now for those who like statistics, we used seven cans of base coat and also two 20 cans of clear coat for this entire build and only one can of matte black. So a lot of paint was used on these builds and a lot of it was just wasted when painting the fans. If we take a look at some of the footage, we see that 99% of the actual paint just went into the air and fell onto the ground because unfortunately the fans had so many little bits and pieces we just 
just had to use a whole ton of paint, but definitely worth it and the painting has been done. Okay, so I thought I might as well give you guys a bit of an update, seeing that we're just basically waiting for paint to dry. We've got some, um, got some trim over here that's basically like drying, can't even get focus, uh, just those little trims, but I'll give you guys a quick update. So it's actually been a week and a half since we last did anything with this build. We've got the uh, case that's now nice and cured, I can touch it, there's no problems. I've given it a wipe down as well, so there's no like, um dirt and dust on it so we won't damage the case. So we've got that guy all done up. We've also too got four of the six fans ready to go. We may notice that this fan right here, I forgot to cut the masking tape and um, well, we can kind of see that. So what I'm gonna do is I uh, just put this guy in the middle of the, um, in the middle of the cooler so you can't exactly see my epic fail. But you'll also too notice some of the edging like if we see on this guy, he's still got, still got a little bit of white showing through and I was expecting that. So I did also to pick up a little jar of touch up paint for this particular color of paint. So I can just go in there with a little brush and actually fix it up because unfortunately I can't take this fan apart which means I can't exactly do a 100% paint job. So. The original idea was to get 99.99% of painted and then take a very thin brush or even a blade and just get some paint in those areas that do need a bit of a touch up. Uh, so that's what's going on with the fans. There again, they're, we're still waiting on two of them to be masked and then I'll bring them down for painting. They're still upstairs because I got bored of masking off fans this morning. Um, so in terms of the actual case itself, bit of an update here. We're getting some of the trim in. So we've got these guys painted in a nice kind of matte black so it really offsets against the um, light kind of sky electric blue. We've got the, oh, as the light fell down, so this light decided it's gonna not provide us light anymore. Uh, let's fix this guy up. So that light can now stay there. But anyway, as I was saying, we've got these little work LEDs put in. I've gone ahead and tested them so we can see a whole bunch of wiring going on here. I have a common positive and a common negative there and we just plugged it into an old power supply. They work and they work really well. I was so stoked to see them come on and work exactly how I wanted them. Um, other LEDs, so we're making up some LED strips at the moment. We've got the ones in the roof done. We've got ones on the side here and also to the side here. So that's pretty slick. Um, um, if we come around the back, we can see obviously here are the wires uh, for the front and side LED and then the other side LED right there. We've got our front panel coming through and everything's really coming together. I put the trimming in on the front so we've actually got buttons and switches and those kind of things. Those are sweet. Also to this LED that lights up, uh, I'm gonna change over to blue so it kind of matches with the system. That means I have to unsolder stuff. So. Definitely not looking forward to that. Um, otherwise, behind here still looks like an abomination. I mean, if we look up in this corner, there's like, yeah, it's not really that great looking, but no one will be looking back here. Um, as I did mention, we've got the trimming over there, which means the trimming here, if we're just waiting for that to finish drying. Front looks pretty slick because there's now no logo there. Otherwise, it is definitely coming along. Still so much more to do, but, um. It, it feels like we're finally getting closer and closer to the end job. Again, little things still need to be done, like adding the trimming around this little cutout so it doesn't look kind of gross, adding the little um, grommets for that section, throwing the standoffs in, actually building the system. Still quite a bit to do, um, but so far, while we're waiting for paint to dry, I've just been doing little odd jobs. Again, like making up the LED strips, so obviously soldering these guys together, uh, painting little trimming like this guy in a matte black, testing the LEDs, fitting the LEDs, just little things like that uh, whilst we wait for the paint to dry. Now, speaking of the paint, um, if you are gonna be doing any kind of modding, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in my voiceover, but build yourself one of these things. So this is just an old light stand, so you can see the hole uh, right there. Uh, there we go, and then also to here. So this used to be your kind of work light, so there would be one light there, one light there, which obviously died, and I use this. Now the reason why I use this is because you can rotate it, so you can keep yourself in the same location and move the actual item around. Now for me, you would have seen in the video, I've been moving myself around in a lot of the time. Um, That's just because of how I've always been painting, but you can do that, and it also too allows you to do this, where you just add little bits and pieces uh, to hold up your stuff, and hanging and painting generally turns out a little bit nicer. So um, do build yourself one of these. As you can see, it's not really the world's greatest. It's full of paint and stuff, but all in all, Definitely something pretty cool. So I'm gonna get back to actually assembling stuff and we're probably actually gonna jump upstairs and do another round of uh, masking so we can get these things painted. 
and done because they're looking really, really cool. So yes, I did say we were going to jump upstairs, but just real quickly, I just wanted to show you guys how well these black accented trims have come up. Now, originally they were silver. I didn't like them being silver, so I repainted them and they've really offset that light blue and oh, it looks really, really cool in person. I hope it's translating on camera just as good. It sits flush and is a real kind of just a nice break in accent uh, from the actual overall blue color. And I'm really, really liking how it's uh, coming up with the rest of the other black accents. Obviously, when more stuff goes in, there'll be more blue, more black, and it will look really, really sharp. But already, I'm very impressed with uh, how it just sort of offsets and accents that front kind of area. Really, really cool looking. So the rest of the day was taken up with little odd jobs like filling in the little extra bits of fan, getting the touch-up paint done and really getting all those little fiddly things to do all done and painted. And that took me all the way through to like 11 o'clock at night once again. Right, so that about wraps it up for this installment of the Hyper Blue project. We have no blue paint, we have no black paint, we have no primer left. The only paint that we have left is what's left in this kind of lid section of the actual paint. It's super dark, it is super night time, it is the end of the episode. So we've got things like fans painted, we've got ram dims covered in paint, we've also too got the case itself painted, we've got accessories painted, we've got the trim painted, we've got everything that needs to be painted, with the exception of the heatsink, because we don't have it yet, are all painted and ready to go. So with that said, that about is it for this installment, but definitely stay tuned because there's a lot to do on the electronic side to get this thing ready for a build. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on the Hyper Blue Project. Next time on the Hyper Blue Project. Band support, and then it says here, 120 by three, or um, one, uh, two, just stuff. Boom, all I do, wiggle this guy loose. Now we've disconnected from the PC. These guys were bought as 60 centimeter cables, which would have been perfect for this build. No, they meant 60 millimeters.